Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today has already proven to be quite a busy day. It is right after lunchtime and we have had quite the morning already. Um, I thought it would be fun in this video to do a little bit of a, a day in the life because when Jerry and I did our last front porch chat, we asked you what videos y'all would like to see some more of. And quite a few of you said that you would, that you really enjoyed these a day in the life of. So that's what we're going to do today. Just to give you a little catch up on where we have been already today is that Jerry is today working a landscape job. It's a pretty big job, lots of stuff to rip out and then a lot of new shrubs are going to go in. So this morning, the kids and I minus Megan, went down and helped him to load up the equipment, the all the shrubs, all sorts of things like that, all of his supplies that he would need for a landscape job. And he took the small bobcat because that is what he uses for those landscape jobs because it's only like three or four feet wide and just really maneuverable. So he took the bobcat and the grapple because he had to pull all of those shrubs out, those kinds of things, and then just loaded him up with tons of new shrubs. He is off. It was quite a chilly morning this morning. I think it was like 27, 28. So the plants were nice and frosty, which allowed Emily and I a chance to get some really great photos of the shrubs with frost on them. So we did that. Then we came and of course, you know, all your mom parental duties, cleaning up the house, then of course, doing a homeschool, we do have three kiddos that we, this is our seventh year of homeschooling. And I know a lot of you within the last year have, whether by choice or by force, have started homeschooling. So we're kind of all in the same boat together. We did some geometry with Emily, which I would prefer geometry over algebra. Algebra to me is just bleh, but geometry is a little bit better. So we spent some time doing that and of course, Emily had to stop in the middle of doing her school because back here in the, this is the front yard, um, it was tons of birds this morning for some reason. I mean, the yard was just filled with robins. So of course she had to lean out the window and take some pictures of those. Now, that you're all caught up to speed. And what we're gonna do now is, again, we are in our front yard. This is one of those crepe myrtles that you saw me do a video on about this time last year. And then right here at the base, these are all the daylilies. And we did, if you will remember back in the summer, really it's kind of end of June, first of July, we did a video about daylilies. And this whole swatch of a bed was just in full bloom of all the daylilies. And it's gorgeous. These are just kind of the classic Southern yellow daylilies as far as variety, you know, nothing really special about them, but when they put on a show, they are absolutely stunning. Now I know some of you have real strong opinions on daylilies and are they worth it because they're only in bloom for a couple of weeks and then they're just green and then during the winter they just look yucky. And this is where we're all designers of our own garden. So what you may like in your garden may not be what I wanna put in my garden. And my space may not be the way that you wanna use your space. So it's okay, there are no wrong answers. It is just that you have your garden I have my garden. Well, I'm doing it anyway. It's my garden and I'm gonna do it. So, be the expert of your own garden. And in this spot, I do love the daylilies. Now, yes, they look a little bad right now. So I'm gonna go in, I've already done about half the bed. I'm gonna finish up this bed as far as cleaning up all the yucky debris. So let me show you, for those of you that don't have daylilies, what I'm talking about with this old yucky foliage. This lovely pile of brown dead foliage is a daylily. And you can see that we have a double row up to our well, and then it turns into a single row. So this time of year, they can look a little unsightly, but you can see that the birds do not care. The birds love it. We've got a tufted titmouse right there. And then we've got lots of black cat chickadees and cardinals and so forth but then you can see right here trying not to make you dizzy this is all the ones that i have already cleaned up and they already have some new foliage sticking out now it may go ahead and get zapped back just because when they're covered in the old foliage it gets to be a little insulated 
So all you have to do is, it makes it super easy, is that it just rips out. So let's see if I can show you, um, I'm doing the camera by myself. See, it just pulls out, super easy. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up this row. Now you'll notice that I do have a lovely pile of sticks right here because I also went ahead and trimmed back my summerific perennial hibiscus from Proven Winters. So right here, you will see those little nubbies sticking out of the ground. That is the actual root ball, the plant of the summerific hibiscus. These are those great, gorgeous perennial hibiscus. This is the time of year that I go ahead and cut mine down to about six inches from the ground. So that's what that pile of sticks is. I have five of those summerifics in this bed, but right now they've pretty much disappeared. You really can't tell where they are. Now, beyond this third crepe myrtle that you see, um, where that little tufted titmouse is on the bird feeder, I don't know if you can see him, but there are a couple of wygelias planted down here. I did it about uh, right about a year ago that I planted these. Now for us, Wygelia are on the border because they're beautiful flowering shrubs that a lot of northerners in colder climates will use instead of azaleas. If they're too cold for azaleas, they'll use Wygelias. We're on the border of being too hot and not cold enough in the winter because Wygelias require what's called vernalization in order to produce their blooms, meaning that they have to be at certain cold temperatures during the winter in order to produce their beautiful flowers. I have five of these. These were left over from a nursery purchase that we had. They weren't selling, so I went ahead and planted them. If they do not do well this spring, they're gonna come out of the ground. This is great prime real estate in my garden, and I don't have, well, I don't want to waste the space on a plant that's not performing as it should. There are just certain plants that may not do well in your growing zone, and that's okay. I've given it at least a year by the time spring runs, rolls around, and if it does great, then I'll leave it. If it doesn't, then it's out of here. You can also see I have lots of winter weeds underneath the bird feeders, so I'm gonna work on getting that out. But I'm just gonna set the camera up and get to work, and y'all can see me working surrounded by some beautiful songbirds. Great thing about having a child that can drive, she can go do errands for you. Emily ran to our grocery store for us, which has a Starbucks inside of it, and got us all some sweet treats. So now I have a little energy to get these weeds out of the bed. All the daylilies have been cleaned up, so now we're gonna get the weeds pulled out. There's winter weeds and then there's summer weeds. There's a lot of winter weeds in here. They're not real deep, and this is a really moist area. But of course, whenever you weed, you want to make sure that you get the root system. As much, if not all the root system, but as much root system as you can. So that way they don't come back. If you just take the tops off, they're going to come back because they have such a great root system. I'm just going to go through here and get as many as I can. Probably won't get them all, but I'll do the best to my ability. Okay, so the daylily bed has been cleaned up. All of the <laughs> daylilies have had all of their foliage all removed. The hibiscus are trimmed back. The weeds are pulled out. And 
other than my little monkey back here, you can see that it is nice and neat and tidy. Obviously, this bed does need a nice fresh layer of mulch. We will do that as soon as we get a fresh truckload in because Jerry needs what mulch we have right now for the landscape job that he is currently doing. So once we get a new truckload in, then we can mulch this and it will be great for at least another year. Right, Jackson? Sure. Sure. Last year, Emily and Jackson were the ones who mulched this. It was a job, wasn't it, buddy? Mm -hmm. It was, but it builds character and builds good work ethic. And then it comes back in rain and then it washes it all away. So. It did not wash it all away. We did have some like historical flooding happen um, not too long after they washed, they put, put down the mulch put down the mulch last year. It was a, that massive, huge flood that we got in February of last year. So there were some ruts that washed in this bed where it washed the mulch away. So that's what he's referring to. But we'll try to throw some footage up and show you so you can understand the kind of water that we got. So you understand it just was not just a little trickle of rain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was a doozy. So that was the one with the tornado too. it had the tornado warning, the tornado, I mean, massive, massive flooding. So that's what he's referring to, the mulch. Otherwise, the mulch doesn't go anywhere. Mulch will get down here and then we'll do great. Jerry just got back from the landscape job. He is getting rid of the, all the debris that he ripped out of the yard. So we'll go check on him. And then we also have a major shipment of perennials from Walter's Gardens coming today. Super excited about that. And we'll be sure and show you that. So let's go check on Jerry. It's a full family affair. Emily was moving the truck. Now she's lowering the trailer. Of course, Jackson. And then Mr. Man over here on the Bobcat brought home all of the debris. And I suppose this means that we get to deal with the uh, all the holly trees. But there he is. And Big Daddy Bobcat moving everybody around. Glad to have him home before the sun goes down. Hello, friend. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. Two days in a row. That's right. Is that it? It's called job security. <laughs> we will keep you in business. No, right. no problems. <laughs> you too, babe. Thank you. You think this is it? This is not a big shipment. This is not the big shipment. It's a shipment. It's not the big shipment. Well, much to my disappointment, the truck of perennials is not coming today. It's going to come Friday afternoon. So we'll just do a whole separate video on the perennials arriving and all the fun things that will be coming in that delivery. Do you notice anything different about this spot? I'll let you look for a second. A wall. It's up, it's so exciting. So come on, let me show you. Um, Jerry and Andrew, it was Jerry and Andrew and I, but I really say it was Jerry and Andrew because I just kind of supervised and watched the process. Really hard to get three people working on this at one time, but it is up. It did take us really a total of three days to do it. One day was, and each of those days was a half a day. So keep that in mind. So it wasn't like a full three days. Um, but the first day was really trying to get that first course where we wanted it. We had to get it the position right. You had to stand here and make sure that it was balanced and it was even and one side wasn't sticking out further than the other um, and so forth and so on. So then once we finally figured out we liked the shape of it, then Jerry had to go back, of course, and make sure that that bottom layer was completely level. Then that was the first day. Second day we went ahead Jerry and Andrew got two courses of the wall done. And what's different about, this is the Weston block versus what we have our walls made out of. So the walls are true retaining walls where the Weston is not. The retaining walls have pins that go in them. So they're really held and then you can glue them also. This Weston is just glued down. So you would do a course and then glue it and then do another course and glue it. But we were finding when we were doing the second course that the first course was still wet from the glue so it would shift if you weren't really careful 
So we just did it two courses at a time. So yesterday they did the final course, but it is here. It looks great. Um, it's not going anywhere. So it's just this glue that's in here. I mean, you know, you can push on this thing all you want. It's not moving. And all it is, is a seating wall. So we don't have to worry about like, we're not trying to retain dirt back from either direction, but it is up. Now, we are not completely finished with this. We will do a whole video on the whole process of the wall because what we have left to do on both ends of the wall, we'll have those columns. Um, so you'll have the wall, then the column will come roughly about this much higher. So not, I mean, not like grand massive columns, but not really an armrest either. Somewhere in between will be here and then these were the caps that are going to go on top of the columns. I think I've showed you the columns, I mean the caps before, but when I'm really looking at it, they're two different colors. And at first it didn't bother me, like, because they're in the same color family, but they are two different colors. I think we're going to go ahead and send them back and get two colors that match. I don't care which one it is, but I, I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to send those back, but you can see this is a 24 inch square that will go on top of the column. We're gonna have to do some math because we're gonna build the columns out of this rectangular stone. And so these are eight by 12 blocks and I we want a square column because we think it would look weird to have a rectangular column with a square cap. It's just that I, the two don't seem like they go together. So we're gonna have to do some cutting on these blocks so that we can get a, um, a nice square piece. We were, we were thinking that these caps were 25 inches, but then, so we built a 24 inch column, just a base one, just to play around. And then no, that cap is a perfect 24. So it just sat on top. We want some overhang. So we're going to do some cutting, but no worries on that. And then let me show you, hopefully I won't make you too dizzy by spinning the camera. These are the caps obviously that go on the wall. They're not glued down yet because we're going to put lighting underneath them. But we're going to use these same caps on this wall. So we'll kind of center them on. So this is how the top will look nice, look thicker. So you have more room for your honey. And then here you go. Now, as of right now, you know, you think, well, Jenny, that's too tall. Your feet are dangling. But you got to remember, we've got to put a final grade, like a really smooth grade with those fines. That'll bring it up probably about an inch. And then you put the pavers, which are two inches thick. And when you do that, it just fits perfectly underneath my feet. And I have little short little legs. Um, Andrew is tall and long legs. And he was like, well, you know, I don't think you could ever really make this wall too tall. And I was like, Andrew, sweetheart, you know, you got long legs, Jean's got short legs. So, but even with my short little legs, when you put the fines underneath and the pavers, that it's perfect length and my feet don't dangle, even though they do right now. So we tested all of that out. It worked out great. Um, these will go on really fast. We just glue those on. The columns will take just a little bit of time because we'll have to do some cutting. But anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you're not going to see the whole rest of our day because you know it's in the afternoon. You know Jerry and I always go have our afternoon coffee. So we haven't been able to do that in the past couple of days because things have just been busy and then it's six o'clock and we're like, yeah, I probably don't need to be drinking coffee at six o'clock tonight because we'll be up all night. So that's what we're going to go do now. We're going to call it an early day because Jerry, of course, was landscaping. Then he has to go back tomorrow. He and Andrew go back tomorrow and install the plants in the mulch. So that way they're done. So he has a big day tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and call it a day. As always, thanks for gardening at the Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.